Hi, this is Brian with The Balanced Dog, and today I'm going to do a little tutorial on how I make my AM and PM Volhard diet. And, and I do it in a batch because I have four dogs that are on this diet. Now, the reason why I'm on a, the, I have them on the AM PM, so this is what we call a split diet, <clears throat> right? So the AM, that's where we have um, a little bit of grain. We uh, used a, a whole rolled oat and buckwheat. And buckwheat's a seed, so it's not a grain. So 18 to 20 percent of that is is the entirety of the diet. So not a lot. And then to that, I'm adding in the veggies and the yogurt. So the, I'll tell you the reason why I, I switched to this diet is because one of my dogs, Hoku, had high liver values. And um, using the, the Volhard liver diet, which is on the website, that's what I used for her for three weeks until I saw that her values had come down below normal. So the trick was now, what diet do I put her on as a maintenance diet? So started with NDF2, and I, at that point, I think I added a liver glandular from Standard Process called Livaplex. And her values weren't, they were actually kind of creeping back up. So in talking to Wendy, we decided that AMPM would be the best. And then we also added SAMe at night, which is um, beneficial for the liver. And the reason why AMPM was the best diet is because the vegetables that I use support the liver, right? So I remember um, the vet was astonished because he called me when he got the last recheck on her, on her liver count. And he asked me, what'd you do? And I said, why? And he goes, because her, her liver values are below normal. So now they were skeptical if I could keep that at that level with her maintenance diet. So, you know, it just took a little bit of um, tweaking and adding the SAMe and the, the standard process Liviplex. Actually, the SAMe is what brought it back down to normal. And I want to say it's been four years and I do their blood work every year and her liver values are perfect. So... That is why I put them on the AMPM diet. This is the original Volhard diet, right? So it's, it's beneficial for something like, like Hoku. Uh, all the dogs are on it now. Um, s you know, it's good for older dogs a lot of times, or if we want to control the vegetables and if we're trying to target, like, like I was, the liver, or we're trying to target the kidney, then we're going to use those vegetables that support that, that organ. Um, the, the other thing I, I realized about it was Hoku's teeth were, were pretty bad when I got her. And on NDF2, they cleaned up pretty well. When I switched her to the AMPM, I noticed a huge difference because of the, the separation of the protein um, in the PM and, the, and then all the veggies and everything else in the AM. So that because of that acid and alkaline of the, um, the oats and the buckwheats, that's actually what precipitated her, her, her teeth to get cleaner and cleaner. So she's never had a dentistry. And I know I should probably get one on her, but, um, but they look phenomenal. So that's, that's another reason why I'm using AMPM and, um, and it's, and it's worked awesome for Hoku. So NDF2, which is this diet here, which is basically if I took these two and put them together, I would have this, right? So this has all three components, uh, the carbs, the fat, and the protein. So a majority of dogs do really well on this, and then I'll kind of give you a quick tip on how to make uh, a batch of NDF2. So I'm going to do a batch of AM right now, and then I will follow it up with a batch of PM. So what I have in here right now is just basically the base mix, and both of these are base mixes and you're just gonna add your protein. Um, I recommend starting with 80-20 ground beef in your PM and also 80-20 ground beef in the NDF2. Um, you can rotate the protein. Um, you can rotate it for chicken for a couple days. Because um, I'm in the mountains, sometimes I don't thaw out the meat or maybe I've ran out. I have a case of mackerel um, in my cupboard so I can just easily um, add mackerel to this for a couple days and they'll be fine. And I also have a couple freezers, so um, I keep all this out in the freezer. And then I make my vegetables, so I have here, I rotate my vegetables, um, you know, every probably three or four days. So this batch is kale and green beans. And so what I do is just put it, bring the water to a boil, 
shut it off and then pour it in the colander and just let it sit. And then I just whack it up in the Cuisinart. And I'll make batches of this so I have, you know, here's one right here. So this is eight cups. That'll go in the freezer and when I need it, I just pull that out and thaw it out. Yogurt's in the freezer, I just pull that out and thaw it out. And this one's pretty easy to do as far as making a batch. And again, you can just go onto the back of the bag here. And if I look at 125 to 150 pound dog, it calls for one cup of the AM, one cup of water, one cup of yogurt, or you can use kefir. If you make your own kefir, you can do that. And one cup of vegetables. So it's pretty much one cup across the board, right? So what I've done is put in eight cups of the AM, eight cups of water. This is eight cups of veggies going right in there. I feel like I'm on the cooking show here. Um, this is four cups. This is eight cups. And then that's it, man. And then you just mix away. That yogurt's still a little bit frozen. So, but anyway, so um, yeah, just mix this up. And then I have containers that I like that fit my fridge. Uh, the AM tends to go into a kind of a square rectangular container like this guy. See, this one is carrots and beets. Um, and so I'm switching to the kale and green beans. So it's good to rotate, rotate those veggies. And that's it. You just mix it up, put it in those um, storage bins. And then again, like I, I'll say in the, in the PM, um, when it comes to like what amount do I feed the dogs, you can go off the guideline here on the back of the bag and we just refer to it as a guideline because we've seen dogs drop weight when they go on to this. Um, so sometimes we have to increase the food or sometimes the dogs gain weight when they go on it. So it's just a matter of adjusting um, as needed for your own dog. My dogs, I mean, I typically just say if you feed your dog a cup of kibble, just start out by feeding them a cup of the raw and then just watch their weight and see how they, how they adjust to it, you know. Um, as far as the um, NDF2, that's another easy one to do in a batch because again, I have four dogs, so I like to make batches, especially if I'm going out of town to make it easier on who's taking care of the dogs. So if you come on and look at the, the bag on the back here at 100 pound dogs, one cup, NDF2, one cup protein, two cups of water. So I'll give you my kind of quick recipe. If I have five pounds of 80-20 ground beef, um, that five pounds is equal to 10 cups. So I would put in 10 cups NDF2, um, roughly 15 cups of water, and then I mix that up. And once that's all incorporated, then I add the beef and then I just mix it by hand as you'll see when I do the PM. So it's, it's pretty simple, and when you make it in a batch, it's actually much more convenient. You're just scooping it out and putting it in a bowl, just like you would kibble, but it's far better than that. So stay tuned. I'll do the uh, batch recipe for the PM. All right, so I'm ready to mix up some uh, PM here, and I'm doing it in a pretty big batch. I got, you know, four dogs on this. <coughs> so... I have my containers. I got, you know, these at Smart and Final. I, I pick the ones that best will fit my fridge based on my space. So uh, when you go in there to, to look at containers, you know, just kind of be cognizant of your fridge space. And then my big stainless steel bowl. And what I have in the bowl is my PM crumble. Uh, that's six and a half cups of PM, PM crumble, uh, 10 pounds of meat, which is equal to 20 cups and then about 12 cups of water. So the way I just figured that is I went onto the back of the bag here, uh, went down and looked at what I would feed a 100 pound dog. Uh, that would be one cup of the PM crumble, two cups of water, three cups of protein, right? So I have 20 cups of protein, just backed it up and I end up needing about six and a half cups of the crumble. And then I just double the water to uh, 12 cups, right? So that's that. So the fun part, roll up the sleeves and get your hands in there and mix it up. Now, if you have this aversion to raw meat, some people do, or some people are vegans and they don't want to touch it. I get it. <coughs> you can just buy some food grade gloves at Smart and Final. There's a, they sell a box of them and you can just put those on and, and mix away. So I'm going to mix this thoroughly. When I, when I start out though, I put the, the crumble in first and I add the water and I just whisked all that together. So I make sure I get 
everything incorporated, and then I'm just going to manhandle it and, and mix it by hand. So, you know, just incorporate it really well. Make sure, especially when you're making a big batch like this, you just want to uh, make sure you got it all incorporated so you don't have like big clumps of PM over here. And, uh, you know, it's a good little hand workout. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and um, speed up the process here through the magic of editing. And then we'll, uh, we'll come back. All right, so we got it all incorporated really well. I'm just going to scoop everything into these containers. I keep both of these in the fridge because I go through it with four dogs. I go through it pretty quick, but you know, you can always freeze one and I, I've kept it in the fridge up to four days, totally fine. So you can always uh, put one in the fridge, depending on how many dogs you have, or you can take the other one out there and put it in the freezer. Or like me, I keep them both in there because again, I go through it pretty quick. Now, how much do you feed them? Well, there's feeding guidelines here on the back that you can kind of follow, but my recommendation is always just if, if you're feeding your dog a cup and a half of whatever food you're using at that time, I just tell them to start with a cup and a half of this and just watch the dog's weight. You know, if, if the dog's thinning out, just increase it. And if the dog's getting a little too thick, then decrease it. So it, it just it depends on a, the dog's activity levels and so on and so forth. So uh, that's just kind of the easy solution. And then you just keep an eye on the dog and adjust from there. So scoop it all in. And once it's, uh, so from here, when I feed my dogs, I'll basically all I'm doing is just I'm going to scoop out. They all get roughly a cup and a half uh, per meal. So you just come in there and scoop out a cup and a half and, and you're done with it. So anyway, so that's the, the final part of it is just putting it away in containers. And I can see there's a bit of raw meat there on the counter. Big scare, right? Um, just clean your countertops with soap and water. You know, that people like to instill that fear that, you know, it's no different than people that are prepping raw chicken or making hamburgers or steaks or whatever. We're just accustomed to cleaning our utensils and cleaning our countertops so we don't have any cross-contamination. So that's the PM diet. And I hope that helps when it comes to making batches because it sure is a lot easier if you can make a batch. And if you have the, the, the room to store it, that's even better because it just cuts down on your time. So. Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.